So we're going to start this class uh, kneeling. If that is um, available to you or in another sitting position. So taking a moment, however you are sitting to arrive in the body, you could close your eyes, you might like to roll your shoulders a bit, just coming into a, a settled position, noticing the body and the breath. Taking a moment to notice how you're feeling this morning. And possibly softening around the tighter edges, maybe of your face, of your shoulders, of your hips, your ankles and wrists. And then dropping your fingertips to the floor. And on the next breath in, lifting your arms up. Little bit of an arch in the spine here, nothing too dramatic. And then as you breathe out, sweep your hands forwards, take the back of your ribs behind you, scoop the front body into the back body. And then breathing in, open your wings, take your elbows out behind you and breathe out forearms together, back of the ribs out behind you again. Inhale, come out wide. And exhale, come over to the right. Lovely. Inhale, take your left arm further behind you, feel that um, shoulder blade. And exhale, sweep the left hand under the right arm coming as far as is possible for you. And then breathing in, lift up. And breathe out, take your hand back down again. Wonderful, we, we repeat this now on the other side, breathing in, lift. And breathe out, arms forwards, back of the ribs behind you. Really feeling into the ribs. Breathing in, open your wings. And breathe out, forearms together, back of the ribs behind you. Breathing in, arms out wide. And now come to the left, breathe out, little lateral flexion, side bending the spine. Breathing in, right arm behind you, feel the shoulder blade. And sweep the right arm under the left, breathing out. Breathing in, lift. And come back to straight. And again, allow the breath to move you, breathing in. Make it a prayer. Breathe out. Back of the ribs really push behind you. Breathe and open your wings, squeeze the shoulder blades. And breathe out, forearms together, scoop the front body into the back body. Breathe and open wide. And come over to the right, breathe out. Breathe in left arm behind you, follow your fingers with your eyes and breathe out, sweep the arm under. Breathe in lift. And breathe out, arm comes back down. Breathing in lift. Breathe out, scoop, push your hands out in front of you. Lovely. We're really trying to curve the spine here. Breathe and open your wings, squeeze. We're enlivening the upper body. Breathe out, forearms together. Breathe, arm open wide and come over to the left. Lovely, everybody. Feel that side body. Breathe in right arm behind you, follow your fingers with your eyes and breathe out, sweep the arm under. 
Breathing in lift. And drop your fingers back down to the floor. We'll take it one more time on each side. I hope you're beginning to feel alive in the upper body. Breathe in lift. And breathe out, push away in front of you. Lovely. Breathe in, open your wings. And breathe out, forearms together. Push behind you. Breathe in, open. And breathe out, come over to the right. Lovely. Breathe in, follow your left arm behind you. And sweep under, breathe out. Breathing in, lift. And breathe out, hand comes down. Breathing in, both arms up. Follow your fingers with your eyes. Breathe out, arms in front of you. Breathe in, open your wings. And breathe out, squeeze your forearms. Try not to be mechanical about these movements. Make each movement meaningful with the breath. Exhale, come over to the left. Lovely. Breathe in, right arm comes behind you. And then sweeping your right arm under the left. Breathe out. Breathe in, peel open and come back. Take a moment to simply notice how you feel. Notice where you feel the brightness, the aliveness, or maybe a tiredness. And then if you're comfortable kneeling like this, just for one more little sequence, please stay. But you could also change your seat. You could kneel up high. And we're continuing this attention to the upper body. I can see I'm in very bright light. Let's see if I come back here, it's better. I'd like you to take your arms out in front of you. Your palms are facing up. Be nice and light in the palms and the wrists. And for this sequence, I'd like you to imagine you're gathering in your hands, whatever you want to gather. It could be light, it could be energy. It could be popcorn for, for all it matters, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I want you to really firm up the arms now. So we're strong in the arms and the hands. And breathe in, gather, bring your fingertips into the palms. Bring your hands behind your head. And breathe out, push away in front of you, really strong. And then breathe in, arms out, gather your hands again and hands behind you, lovely. And breathe in here and breathe out arms in front of you. So we're gonna continue this just really strong in the arms, gather, breathing in. Breathing out, push in front of you. Breathe in behind your head. I did it a little bit wrong the first time. Breathe out, out to the side, push as if you're pushing something really heavy. Gather into your palms, breathe in. And breathe out, push in front of you. Gather, breathe in. So it's quite strong, you should begin to feel this now. Breathe out to the sides as if you're pushing a truck on each side of you. Breathe in behind you. Breathe out, out front. And keep going a few more times, really strong. Do you start feeling your muscles, your joints, your skin, even aching a little bit, possibly? Mine definitely are. Okay, 
making this your last one. Drop your hands for a moment. And we're gonna do that same movement. So take your arms out in front of you, but now feather light, like silk and soft, no muscular engagement. Just floating your hands behind your head and floating your palms out in front of you. Floating your hands behind your head and floating your arms out to the sides and keep going just a few super feather light Maybe taking one more of each. So delicate. Like a spring breeze in honeysuckle. Or dog rose or whatever is around you at the minute. And then release, close your eyes, feel the body, notice the breath. What do you notice? How do you feel? And if you'd like to join me now in an all fours position, taking time to really position your hands, taking nothing for granted here. And we're going to imagine that our necks start at the hips. So as you breathe in, follow your eyes along the mat in front of you as you dip the belly, lifting your eyes as high up in front of you as works for you. And then come back the other way, but from the hips, following with the eyes, scoop the front body into the back body. And so we come into cat cow with this very subtle spine all the way from the hips to the top of the head, inhaling to drop, exhaling to scoop. And I'll leave you to follow this movement, trying to differentiate between the tilting of your pelvis and then each vertebra of your spine. And really use your eyes to trace the movement along the floor from your navel to all the way up in front of you. You might be tracing up a wall. Allow the breath to move you. Just taking a couple more rounds, really attentive to the vertebrae of your spine tilting of your pelvis as if you've never actually done this before because when we do things as if we know what's coming in a sort of mechanical mindless way we don't reap the full benefits of a yoga practice it's the attentiveness that is interesting and then meet me in a neutral spine and we'll reverse the breathing here so on a breath in arch the body up Take the back of the ribs up towards the spine, navel to the spine, excuse me, to the ceiling. Breathing out, drop the belly, follow the eyes along the floor up in front of you. Breathing in, scoop up. 
So we're simply doing the same movement, but reversing the breath. And at one of these moments when you're ready, just sinking back into a child's pose, coming to a softness in the body, breathe. So lovely. If you'd like to join me again on all fours and take your left forearm across the mat, your left forearm is across the mat, and you're going to come to the heel of your right hand and you're gonna slide the right hand forwards as you drop your chest and draw the left hip behind you. So it's like a diagonal stretch, pushing through the right heel of the hand pulling through the left and take a few breaths here dropping the chest as you feel a slightly diagonal direction across the body you'll feel it in the right armpit and then on a breath in draw the right forearm across you and breathe out left heel of the hand pushes out to the left as you pull your right hip behind you so take a few breaths. Noticing where you feel this sensation and then start moving from side to side quite quickly. Push, push. Remember the diagonal, push, push. Just taking that a couple more times on each side. Really enjoying the access to the ribs. But you're pushing through the heel of the hand and your fingers are up in the air. Yeah, gives you much more of a sense of pushing, more traction. Just a couple more times on each side. Wonderful. And then ease yourself back to a child's pose again. Feeling the wrists, the shoulders, the back of the ribs. And come to the top of an inhalation and pause and then exhale with your mouth open. Let's take two more like that, breathing in. Fantastic. And then coming back up to all fours. You're gonna follow your right fingertips with your eyes as you begin to sweep the arm behind you reach up and forwards and as you move like this in the right shoulder it's fine for you to sit back towards your heels and come forwards really enjoying the movement but a sense of really reaching with that arm with the fingers and then reverse the direction Wonderful. And then taking the right hand down. And we'll do the same with the left. 
follow your fingers with your eyes. Breathe the body open. And then reverse the direction. So, so far we've been giving our upper body quite a lot of attention. Wonderful. And then placing both hands down, really settle quietly into your arms, curl your toes under and sit back towards your heels. And relax the head, the neck and become super quiet now in the ribs, the shoulders, the arms, the neck. Hopefully feeling a nice little stretch for your toes, the plantar fascia of your feet. And in your own time, beginning to lift the knees, take the heels towards the floor. Really lengthening the spine as you come up into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. And then as soon as you're up, bring the knees back down again. And continuing in your own time to lift and then drop from your downward dog. Trying not to really push into your hands. I'd rather you felt the weight of the body pouring through the legs. So your upper body's super relaxed. And next time you're up, staying up and taking a few breaths. Freestyle, if you want to move, twist around in your dog, please do. And then looking forwards and walking your feet and your hands towards each other. And we'll come to a little dangle. If you want to hold on to your elbows, please do. And this feeling of the upper body, the spine and all of the torso cascading from the pelvis. Firmly planted through the feet. And then maybe have a little sway from side to side. Breathing here. And then releasing your hands from the elbows and rolling yourself all the way up. shoulders and head come last and take a moment to feel yourself standing. I think I'm trying to be quite sensitive in the practice today. I think I feel very sensitive in my own body. So we're just noticing the details. Hands to the chest and on a breath in reaching up. Take your pelvis forwards a little for a little bit of a back bend here. And then straighten and breathe out, come all the way down. On a breath in, come up halfway. Really roll the shoulders away from the ears. And step back to plank, breathe out. Let's take a few breaths in our plank, really pushing the earth away now through the hands. As you push your heels away and imagine that you have a brick in between your thighs. Try and lift the side waist. 
breathe. Try and lift the back of your ribs towards the ceiling and not your bottom. And feel the condensing of the front body into the back body. Take a full breath in and then drop your knees <clears throat> and roll all the way down over the front of your body and slide your hands out in front of you. Forehead to the mat. Bringing your attention to your left arm and your right leg. Breathing in, lift these. So we diagonally come into a little back bend. Your chest and head can come up. And then breathe out, drop. Right arm and left leg, breathe in, lift. Really activating across the diagonal back of the body. Breathe out, come down. And keep moving from side to side for a few rounds. Really point your toes. <clears throat> and then rest. We'll now do the same arm and the same leg. So lift the right arm and the right leg. So if you're being pulled through the right fingertips, pull through the toes and drop. Left arm and left leg. And drop. Hands to your ribs, breathing into all fours. Breathe out, downward dog. Feel the whole body this morning. And then meet me again in a plank. And we take a few breaths again in your plank. We build strength, we build stamina, as well as flexibility and an openness in the body. As we come down this time, you have the option of dropping your knees or lowering slowly down. So your upper arms are parallel with the floor, hovering a moment and then coming all the way down. And I'd like you to interlace your hands over your lower back. Bring your legs together. So you're gonna press your toes, your pubic bone, into the floor. You're going to roll your shoulders up to the ears and back, draw the hands down past the tailbone and lift the chest up into snake pose. Take a few breaths. So we feel the shoulder blades, we feel an opening across the shoulders and the chest. Chest won't come up so high. Breathe. Take a full breath in and then come down and rest on one cheek, your arms by your sides. Feel the body. And this time we'll come into Shalabhasana, locust pose where we lift both arms, both legs, the chest and the head, really activating through the back, through the toes, through the fingers. Breathe. Imagine you're flying, whole of the back body strong. Take a full breath in. And then as you come down, rest yourself down on the opposite cheek and soften the body here. Notice the breath. Hands by your ribs, bring yourself back to all fours in the downward dog. Breathe. 
and looking in between your hands, walk or step your feet forwards. And on an inhale, come up halfway. Lovely and long in the side body. And exhale, draw yourself down into full Uttanasana. Breathing here. On an inhale, again, look up halfway. And exhale, step your right leg behind you and bring the knee down. Bring yourself up. So we're not coming into the deepest lunge possible and you have the option of curling your toes under at the back or not. And then some of you might like to take your hands up behind the ribs. Only if that's available. If it's not, try one hand. So our hands are like butterfly wings. And we're going to gently move the pelvis forwards. Gentle back bend in the spine. Maybe your palms come together. But then immediately we come out of it, draw back, your palms open. We're going to move in and out of this very delicate movement. We're finding that curvature of the spine. We're working our shoulders, our wrists. You might feel this a little bit at the front of the right hip and thigh, but we're, like I say, we're not coming into full lunge. It's more about the back bend. And the next time you come up, release your arms. And I want you to imagine as you sweep your arms up and behind you that you're catching a, a beach ball. And then come back again, draw the hips back, the pelvis back. And keep going. Very delicate. Back bending. We're taking repetitive movements rather than staying a long time in a, in a lunge right now. Okay, but then take both hands down inside the left foot. At this stage, you might like to slide the right knee further behind you. And some of you will bring your arms out, hands out in front of you. And this will be enough. Some of you will bring your forearms down to the mat. And some of you might need a block underneath the forearms. It's a very deep opening into the groin and the left hip. And then settle for a few breaths, softening, dropping into the hips. The next option may or may not be for you. I'm bringing my right, actually I'm gonna come up on my hands again, bending the right knee. And I'm gonna sweep my left hand around me to that right foot to draw it in. And then I'm coming down on my forearm again, spinning to look over my left shoulder. Breathe here, quite a strong stretch of the quadricep on the right side, the thigh muscles and the pelvis is dropping forwards. Take a full breath in and then gently release. 
Curl under the back toes, lift the knee into a lunge. And bring yourself back to a downward dog. And looking forwards, walk, step or jump your feet in towards your hands. And come all the way up, inhale. And exhale, we'll come all the way down again. Inhaling to a flat back. And now stepping the left foot behind you, breathe out, knee drops down. And come up and we start with those butterfly wings behind the ribs, either one or two. And breathing in. Pelvis comes forwards, little back bend. And breathe out, release. We take a few, really delicate. So I'm seeing a couple of you lean forwards with the torso. That's not what you're doing. Come into a little back bend. And then we simply draw the pelvis back and we straighten the spine, we're upright, we're not leaning forwards. Watch me if you're unsure. And releasing your arms down and we come to gathering that beach ball behind us, very delicate. Most interested in the movement of the pelvis and that gentle back bend in the spine, that gentle extension. Really good. One more. And then come back and drop both hands inside the right foot. Maybe slide the left knee further behind if that is right for you. Possibly walk your hands forwards, forearms down with a prop or not. And breathe here. And then coming back onto your hands, lift the left foot and sweep your right hand behind you to gather that foot or your legging or not. Maybe come down on the left forearm and look over your right shoulder. Breathe. Take a full breath in and then release the foot, come up on both hands, lifting the back knee. And we'll step forwards actually, if you'd like. No, let's, excuse me, let's come back to a downward dog. I'm so sorry. And take five breaths or so, either in a downward dog or dropping into child if you want to rest. Listening to your body. And we will meet with our feet in between our hands. So walking your feet forwards, gently coming up. And we come back to standing at the front of our mat, feeling the body. I hope you're enjoying this practice as much as me this morning. Take a breath in and lift. And breathe up, fold. Breathing in halfway. Step back to your downward dog again. 
and sweeping the right leg up behind you, point the toes and really energize that leg. And bring the right foot in between your hands. Left foot comes down. Alignment is heel to instep as we sweep into Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. And I'd like us to find stillness in this pose this morning. Strength, but an ease in the pose. A calmness in the pose. Turn the right palm up. Let's just straighten that right leg and inhale. And then exhale, re-bend and come into your reverse warrior. Look down to your back foot. And really feel into the right ribs. Coming back to warrior two, you can straighten the leg in between and then come back in. And then immediately come into your side angle pose, either elbow to the knee or hand to the floor. Or some of you might like a bind with a right arm under, left hand behind, hands clasped, looking over the left shoulder. Breathe and make a, can you find a lightness here within the effort? Take a full breath in and then release in the bind. If you're in the bind, breathe out. And then we'll gently come up again. Step the left foot in towards the right, just a little bit. And then bending into that right knee, take the right hand to the floor or to a brick and we'll pop ourselves up into half moon. So the standing leg is strong, the foot is straight, and you're pushing through that left heel, possibly peeling to open the hip, possibly spinning the chest and lifting the left arm. Breathe. Can you radiate from the navel? Take a full breath in. And then we very delicately come back the way we came. Two. Windmilling the arms down, back to a downward dog. Or child if you need to. And lifting the left leg up behind you, point the toes, lift from the navel, really energize that leg. And step your foot forwards in between your hands. Right heel comes down, heel to instep. Bring yourself to Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. In stillness, really connect. Turn your left palm up, straighten the leg, inhale. Exhale, come into your reverse warrior. You might like to look down towards the back heel. Breathe into the left lung, the left side of the ribs. Inhale back to warrior two. And straighten that front leg if you need to. And we'll come straight into a pass back on us in a side angle pose. Elbow to the knee or hand to the floor or bind. Spinning that right shoulder back around and looking over it. Breathe.
Are you soft in the jaws? Take a full breath in. As you breathe out, release the bind if you're binding. Come back to warrior two. Hands to your hips and just step that back foot in a little bit. So you know what's coming. Bend into the left knee, your hand comes down. Whoops, and your right leg pops up behind you. And it's gonna depend on how you're feeling in the sacrum in the hip as to whether you peel open the right hip. Push through that heel, maybe spin the chest, lift the left right arm up, breathe. And we're radiating out in all directions from the navel. Bit of a balance. Take a full breath in. And then very delicately come back the way you came, warrior two. And windmilling your hands down to a downward dog. And we'll come down and rest in a wide knee child's pose, knees wide apart, big toes together. Maybe hands underneath your forehead. Take a while to settle. Notice the breath. Become really heavy in the buttocks. How much more can you soften? Before you slide yourself into a sphinx, so come onto your belly. Legs out behind you. And here, let's actually come down, forehead to the hand. And taking your arms down beside you, palms are facing down. Bending both knees, bending both feet in towards the buttocks. And if you can reach for the top of your feet, maybe reach for your ankles, you can use a belt here. And we're going to do that funny little worm crunch movement we did last week. I know all of, not all of you are here. I want you to imagine that you're a worm. And we'll just practice this a little bit before we come into the back bend. You could come onto your chin to look ahead of you. And then you're going to try and draw your knees in towards the body and let your bottom lift. So you get this little arch in the spine. And then you slide the knees away. We're trying to rock the pelvis as we move the knees in and slide away. So just do that a few times. We're trying to bring a little bit of curvature into the lower back but directing the movement from the knees. So the bottom lifts, the front of your pelvis lifts, but your chest and your knees are sliding on the floor. And then one of these times, draw your knees in towards you, really arch. And then as your knees slide away, maybe bring yourself into Dhanurasana, bow pose. Holding your ankles, if that's possible, flexing the feet and breathe here. We've prepared the body completely for Dhanurasana. I'd like you to really encourage your thighs in towards each other, your knees in towards each other. 
and breathe open the body. Take a full breath in and then release and come down to rest again. If you need to gently move your hips from side to side. And we're only going to do one more. And you have the option of holding your ankles from the inside, slightly different um, movement of the shoulder. It's a slightly different quality to the pose. Some people will prefer it. Some people will rather come back to the original. So bend up your knees again, holding the ankles inside. And then coming back to your wormy crunch. Really want to bring a lot of mobility into the pelvis and the spine here. And it helps us access Stanurasana more, I think. And at some stage, as you slide your knees away, bring yourself up. So I find that really difficult to hold inside the ankle, so I'm going to hold outside. And really push your feet into your hands, pull your hands into your feet and breathe yourself open. If you have a little rock, that's fine as well. Take a full breath in and then come down to rest. Maybe moving your bottom gently from side to side. back bending like that is quite likely to agitate the breath. That's what I notice. Hands by your ribs. And then push yourself back. Curl your toes under and sit back towards your heels with that lovely calm feeling in the arms, the shoulders, the hands, relax the neck and the head. When you're ready, begin to take your heels towards the floor. So we come into a downward dog, but we immediately walk our hands into the feet. Take the toes out and drop into Malasana. Lovely counter pose. You should feel a lovely soothing opening in the lower back. Then we come all the way back again. Come back slowly to your forward fold. Walk your hands back to your downward dog. Drop your knees. Sit back to your heels. And I'm going to leave you for a few rounds to move between these poses. So we're moving into degrees of forward folding to counter all the back bending that we've been doing. To so take it slow, be kind to yourself. And of course, if you really enjoy a squat, a malasana, you might like to stay there a few breaths. And if you are going to stay, it's really useful. I can see some of you haven't, it's hard to have the heels down. So it's really important that your heels are in contact with something. So either roll your mat up, so you can press your heels into the mat, or you could use a block or books. So you can really allow the hips to drop, allow space into the lower back.
And then from here, bringing your hands behind you so that you can come to sitting with your feet out in front of you. And we come to that very delicate twist we've been practicing. So knees are bent. And you're gonna follow your right, take your feet quite wide apart. You're gonna follow your right shoulder with your eyes as both knees drop to the right. And you spin the torso around to the right, hands behind you. Look over the right shoulder. This is such a beautiful, gentle twist. And then gently come back. Follow the left shoulder with your eyes. Gently, both knees will drop to the left. Hands behind you, look over the left shoulder. And continue. This is the last physical pose we'll be doing before we come into Shavasana. And I keep shunting forwards. I don't know about you. Move yourself back, myself back. Make it light, make it delicate. And at some point before you come into Shavat, your Shavasana, take a couple of breaths in a seated pose, simply to observe how you're feeling now, maybe closing your eyes. And it's possible that you would like to take the remainder of this class in a seated meditation or come to lying down. Please take time to rest, to observe, to let go. Bringing any intention that you may have set for your practice into your heart. and committing the whole of your body to the earth. And of course, stay for as long as you like. And when you're ready to come out, beginning to take a few slightly deeper breaths. Maybe circling a little bit into your wrists, into your ankles, making any movements that are right for you to ease yourself gradually into more of an awakening state. And only if you'd like to, meeting me sitting, eyes closed with the hands together in front of your heart space to mark the end of your practice.
and taking a full breath in towards the heart and breathing out gently, bowing your head, chin to your chest. Inhaling to lift your head, open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> Namaste.